right. Yeah. Let's meet our special guest of the morning. I can't believe it. It's Linda Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen. She is a cinematic immortal, thanks to her role as Sarah Connor in the Terminator movies, but Linda's latest film is a very different prospect indeed. It's called Holy Water. It opens in cinemas across the UK today. It's described as an arousing comedy, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You tell them. <laughs> uh, it's breakfast TV. <laughs> yes. I have to be careful? Yeah, a bit. No, I'm not good at being careful. Uh, it's the story of a, a Viagra heist for hapless Irishmen in a... In a town where nothing has happened for centuries, facing economic decline. So they decide that they should heist a truck of Viagra. Um, and then they can sell, they can take it to Amsterdam and sell it for nine bucks a pop. And um, they, by dumb good luck, they get this uh, truck, this lorry full of Viagra. And then the drug company sends its big guns from the US to investigate and they realize that what they've stolen is worth $63 million, and they're in completely over their heads. And in a panic, they take the whole shipment, they put it in plastic containers, and they shove it down an adjunct to the town well. And we can imagine So it gets in the water so supply. So it gets in the water supply. <laughs> and that's and when Craig whole... starts to get excited, right, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> Now, the film, I think it's fair to say the film is uplifting in more ways than one, if you get my drift. <laughs> Linda, as you just heard, she plays Corey Williams, a hard-nosed American investigator who's sent in to catch the sex pill pilferers. But she's struggling to get any help from the local plot. <laughs> but that wasn't Ireland. That's beautiful Sunny Devon. Yes, we shot it in beautiful Sunny Devon. Yeah, that looked like Dartmoor, actually, I think, if I, if I recognise yes, it. Was. And you were yeah. obviously blessed with the weather. <laughs> oh, yes, we were blessed. <laughs> now, we have to talk a little bit about Linda's arms, cos they were the talk of the town back in 91, following the release of Terminator 2. Every woman wanted a pair. But is it true <laughs> you got yours courtesy of an Israeli sort of military sort of tough guy? Yes, I, I worked for those How arms. hard did you have to work? Three hours a day. Three hours a day for... Six days a week. Well, I was working out 18 hours a day. I mean, a week. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, weapons training and all kinds of recon and stuff, as well as the physical training. So it was a bit of work. Exciting, or does it get tedious? Um, it was very exciting, actually. It, um, it, it felt really good to get the strength on like that. You know, so I would um, never I know. Just had... <laughs> Looking at your face, Craig, <laughs> neither would you. <laughs> I'm not exactly a gym boy. <laughs> I had just had a baby, so I had Ooh. an extra reason to sort of get the pounds Because off you are and... very, you are a very slim person, aren't you? And I was actually a lot smaller than this when I was doing that film. Uh, you know, people think that muscle translate to large, but no, I was actually a size two. This is a size six. But it was all muscle. When you strip the, you know, the fat out of the body, it. It looks big on television, but uh, and I was definitely all muscle, God. but you know, I was a very small all muscle. Couldn't find clothes small enough. Lowry, you must have the same problem. All the time, <laughs> yes. No, I was thinking, cause after I had my first baby, I went on a mega diet because there's something about getting pregnant when your body's so out of your control that actually the desire just to be able to fit into any piece of clothing is so great that you're probably the most motivated you could ever be, I think, to lose weight after a baby. Yes. But we have something in common that we, we are both identical twins, aren't we? We are. Is that right? Not with each other. No. <laughs> <laughs> and your twin, your twin has got a proper job, hasn't she? She does. Um, I'm the one in my family who didn't do something with her life. Oh. Uh, I know, that's the, way, oh. that's the way it lays. It sort of keeps me humble, but my sister's an ER nurse and but a she's hospice done, nurse. But she's done nurse. some acting with you. She did. She, she doubled me in the second Terminator when there are two Sarah Connors on screen. So we had to bring her in and extend her hair and, you know, teach her weapons. And she got to shoot me in the back from an unsafe distance, was... which is what she'd always wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> she got, she got is she the, the, old, is she the older no, twin? she's the younger ah. one. She says next time she's going to come back as the alpha twin. But You guys are so competitive, you twins. Oh, you're a triplet, actually. Yeah, but I'm you? still the youngest yeah. of all three of us, so yeah. this is why I have to fight for everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I only watched a rerun of Terminator 2 the other day. I, as I said I earlier, I think it's a true classic. Remember this? I absolutely that, love was that, 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 was the, that was the twin. That was the twin. There. So, yes, a lot of those shots were my twin in the background taking the first shot, she and then when they it... would cut to the close-up, it would that be was me. You. Is that because but... she's such a really bad actor, or did she just want to do all the acting? No, they want, <laughs> they want the actor closest to camera. 
Right. So they put me in the front and her in the background. But she didn't get to speak on screen. No. That is amazing. Okay. You were back as um, Sarah Connor, of course, in Terminator Salvation, weren't mm -hmm. you? It was the well, voice. The, yeah, the boat yeah. shape was. More but I, are you going to do <laughs> another one? And actually um, appear in it, darling? I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I don't even know how successful the last one was. I didn't like it very much. Oh. Well, you definitely <laughs> won't be back then, will you? Oh, dear. <laughs> but to know then, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind doing gym three hours a day. Oh, come over here, really? Terminator. Come on. <laughs> I'll get you, my pretty. <laughs> and your little dog, too. <laughs> oh, dear, I Judy can't Garland believe it's funny. <laughs> We're doing the end of our little relationship. Craig and I are going to miss him. Now, here's what's happening on today's show. So what percentage of UK prisoners have no religion? The answer is 33%. I'll admit, I thought it would be higher. Uh, you're watching Britain's Brightest Daytime Show with Larry Turner, Craig Revel Horwood and Linda Hamilton, whose hilarious new movie, Holy Water, opens in cinemas today. And in a moment, Linda's going to take us through the rest of today's headlines. But first, a story in some of the heavies, a lighter sentences for religious villains. Right stuff at 5.tv is the address if you fancy pinging us an email with your views. A Judge Cherie Blair, although she goes as Booth when she's in court, uh, her decision to spare a bloke jail because he was a devout Muslim has outraged many, including the National Secular Society. Cherie, who's a devout Catholic herself, spared 25-year-old Shamso Mir jail last month after he pleaded guilty to punching another man in the face, breaking his jaw in a row over who was first in a queue. <laughs> Cherie explained she was sparing him prison, not just because of his previous good character, but also because he was a man of faith. The National Secular Society claims this judgment shows unjust favouritism to religious people and a presumption that those with a faith are more entitled to leniency than the rest of us. And they're right, aren't they? Would Cherie give a lighter sentence to religious nutters who kill their own daughters for honour or who attack gay men, Larry? Um, I think uh, what she said was totally unacceptable. I'm, I'm not surprised there have been complaints about it because I'm not... Uh, you know, religious in the, in the sense of organised religion, and I really resent this idea that simply because you have wear a badge of a religion, that means you must be a better person, and therefore you deserve a lighter sentence. It's somehow it's possible this the other was... way round, isn't it? That if you're someone of faith who believes in doing the right thing according to your faith, that you've done a double crime, well, not just against society well, but also against then, your but god. Then, but then, then the person to forgive you would be God, of course. And that's a different yeah, thing from the court. I think the fact is that she. We, we, the trouble is that we very famously know that she is a very devout Catholic, and this. Uh, polishes this idea of her and of those people who are very publicly religious that they think they're better than the rest of us. You see, we, we are God's chosen people, therefore he might have pumped somebody in the face, but actually he's a nice guy, which I think is wrong. I think she, as a judge, she should know. I'm quite amazed, actually, she should know that that she cannot be seen. She might think it, but she can't, certainly can't say it in court. Mm. Oh, I'll give you a, a lighter sentence because you're a religious man. She said it twice, which is really bizarre. Um, and I think she should be challenged on it. And I think all judges should remember that actually we are supposed to be all equal in front of the law, mm. whether we are religious or not. We should all be treated the same. He punched a man in the face. And broke his jaw. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Um, Linda, I can see you nodding along to that. You agree? I totally agree with Lowry. Um, you know, what is the difference between someone who's devout religious and fanatic religious? Mm. You know, there is, um, there has to be mm. some sort of line drawn in the sand. And in our country, we have a separation of church and state. Well, and we, that we're, would we're absolutely that not be tolerated. Um, you is know, that right? And it, it, and it is so subjective. Do you know her idea of what a devout, how does she know how devout he is? Do you know? I mean, it is so completely subjective. I don't think. That I think it what could she was trying to say up. is, you're not some nasty little hoodie who goes around mugging old grannies. That's what she was trying to yeah. say. And probably he he probably looked terribly. But that surely you, you, you say that, don't you? By saying you are of good character, yes. you have never uh, been in front in any trouble before. That is all that needs to be said. Yeah. Yeah, I totally or agree. I don't think um, religion should have any place in a court of law in that respect. I think yeah. it's crazy. To, to do that, and I think she's absolutely mad uh, to even suggest it. Yeah, how do you judge someone's the, character? The thing, the thing is that having, so having, having been in and out of court many times, um, not for criminal, but anyway, <laughs> um, what you learn when you're in a court of law, a court of law of law, is you learn you have to shut up and listen to the judge while they spout utter nonsense, <laughs> and you just have to nod and just and absolutely just let it all out, Harry. Let it all out. You don't challenge let them. Let it all out. No, I won't Divorces, let it all out. Be, darling. Yeah, no, <laughs> but still, you have to listen to them tell you yeah. about the world, and you go, hmm, thinking you are insane. But okay.
OK, so uh, it seems like the panel is united here with the National Secular Society. <laughs> uh, and what do you think? Do religious folk deserve lighter sentences? Don't forget to email us your thoughts. Right stuff, dot five, right stuff at five.tv is the address. After the break, though, it's Linda with the rest of today's headlines, including yet another safety scare for Toyota owners, and the 19-year-old British starlet who's out-earned all her Hollywood rivals. Can you guess who it is? All will be revealed after another quick break. Don't go away. According to today's Daily Star, which celebrity couple want to adopt a baby from Haiti? Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, David and Victoria Beckham, or Katie Price and Alex Reid?